What's up guys, it's Dan here from EcoExist UK and today we're going to be looking at an amazing ecosystem, a biodiversity hotspot and a wildlife paradise, otherwise known as ponds. Aside from the endlessly therapeutic entertainment, a healthy pond will be wildly beneficial to a variety of creatures, including amphibians, insects, birds and even mammals. A pond will become a theatre, staged in all of life's colours, and stands as an inspiring educational tool to teach about life cycles and habitats. Ponds come in all shapes and sizes, but let's look at some of the do's and do nots when it comes to pond creation and pond maintenance. Location is important, so choose a sunny spot with nearby vegetation, offering cover and a place to hibernate. Create levels or shelves, as different plants and animals thrive in different depths. Having steps or ramps also helps any mammals, such as hedgehogs, climb out if they should fall in. Add plants, native species if possible. They will provide a hiding place, a landing pad, cooling shade and food. Pond plants are the foundations, along with water, of this ecosystem. Some of the plants in my pond are propagated plants from other nearby wildlife ponds. With permission, I took some small snippings that have now established themselves here. Oxygenating plants are especially easy to transport. Don't be too tempted to continuously top up your pond's water level. Naturally, it will fluctuate and create new habitats across the seasons. If things do get desperate, use rainwater rather than tap water, as the chlorine in tap water can harm lots of wildlife. And if you run out of rainwater, you can fill up a bucket with tap water, give it 48 hours to be safe, and by that time the chlorine will have evaporated and you can use it then. Try to avoid the temptation of adding fish to your wildlife pond. Although pretty, it can be very destructive, eating young amphibians as well as aquatic larvae of things like dragonflies and damselflies. Your pond's going to quickly become home to a wide variety of wildlife. You can see one of this year's tadpole graduates. And there's Merlin, pond regular. He's a common frog in here quite often. Okay, so hopefully some of those points have given you some guidance on how to design or manage your pond. Um, and it's only a matter of time now until wildlife comes your way. You know, it's amazing how quickly nature will find, will find this ecosystem and will start populating it. And then you've got the pleasure of just enjoying and watching the pond as it changes through the seasons and as life cycles are complete and started again. Um, if you're starting a pond from scratch and you need some more information, I would recommend Frog Life and their Just Add Water project, which offers really good guidance on how to turn a butler's sink, for example, into a, a fully fledged wildlife friendly pond. Um, any questions, send them my way on Twitter at EcoExist UK or email me. Um, I think Kate is planning to provide you my, with my email address if you need to get in touch. Anyway, thanks for watching. It was a real pleasure to give you a tour of my pond and uh, yeah I hope that there's more ponds to come because the more the merrier you know these are uh, one of the most ecologically beneficial things you can add to your green space and you will be rewarded believe me anyway good luck and uh, thanks for watching goodbye <laughs>